we just can't s- stay on the path of going to work and doing this only, you know, for the next 20 to 25 years. Uh, and I see my colleagues that are in practice, you know, I'm, I'm about roughly 20 years out and, you know, they're just, um, they're just burnt out. And yet, you know, they've got a lot of obligations that kind of keep them, you know, stuck where they're doing because, you know, they got to put their kid through private school and they got to pay for their lifestyle and all of those things. And um, so, you know, I, I don't just see it in myself, but I see it in my colleagues. And so that, that, you know, that was the tipping point that we just had to do something other than just kind of clock in and, and, and do everything for the next 20 to 25 years solely and just rely on that as our sole source of income. If you're struggling with your vitality, energy, mood, focus, or sleep, this podcast is for you. Your host, Dr. Ann Sung, ER doctor and airspace flight surgeon, will help you reach for the stars and remove the barriers or blockades that have been holding you back from living your best life. If you've been challenged by your health, relationships, or productivity, then it's time for a breakthrough. So here's your host, Dr. Ann Sung. Welcome to It's Not Rocket Science Show, and I am your host, Dr. Ann Sung. Today, I have uh, Joel and Winnie Napenos here. Uh, Joel is a practicing academic dentist, and Winnie is a super mom of her household and also a real estate professional status. And we're going to be talking about how uh, professionals can actually pivot to achieve financial freedom, time freedom, and even balance uh, life with many, many kids at home through real estate investing. And so Joel and Winnie, thank you for and welcome to the show. Would you please introduce yourself to the audience a little bit of what you do and uh, why you're doing all, all the real estate investing that you do? All right, I'll, I'll go first. Um, so, you know, I'm, a, I'm an academic dentist. My specialty is in oral medicine. And so I wear a number of hats um, as a residency program director, um, also a hospital department chief and medical director. Um, within an academic medical center here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Um, but, you know, I, I think we've pivoted in mid-career while still working full-time in uh, starting investing in real estate and then starting a real estate investing firm. Uh, you know, 5DH uh, Capital is our company, um, which, you know, I work together with Winnie to help dentists um, achieve financial freedom and build wealth by earning passive income uh, through investing in multifamily real estate. Um, so, uh, Winnie, introduce yourself. Yes, thanks, Anne, again for having us. Um, yes, yeah, so I actually had a diverse background as well as myself. So I actually studied economics at the University of Western Ontario at a young age, and I wanted to work in banking really just to learn more about what I needed to know to get financially ahead in life uh, while helping others out at the same time. So my first job actually you know, going back was in high school, and I was actually a bank teller. And I, you know, it was a uh, first thing that I saw was how eye open it was that um, to see individuals live paycheck to paycheck, essentially. And so it really um, opened my eyes some more. And I continued to work in the bank further when I graduated and became a personal banking officer, obtained my um, personal financial plan designation. And it was just a fulfillment of loving to help people, you know, um, financially helping to get their finances in order, uh, achieving their dreams of getting their first home, et cetera, and, send, and just send them on the right path. So that was the first of you know many to come. Um, and essentially with my career path, I saw also that there's this personal vulnerable side of things to people with regards to situations. And um, you know, I got to see where they were coming from and so as I moved up the corporate chain in banking, I realized that in the managerial role, I really missed helping out people financially. Um, and this wasn't where the corporate ladder was leading me to in, in terms of my passion fulfillment in that sense. So I found myself at this intersection of life where I wanted to achieve my goal, which was, you know, I was there, I was getting there, but I realized that my passion of helping others was missing. So I was drawn to a world that um, then went into the world of nursing where I became an ICU nurse and still help people, um, you know, change their life in a meaningful way. 
Um, and that was great. But then I realized that there had to be more to life. And I realized that real estate was something that was able to open a lot of doors, not only for ourselves, but for others along the way. So that's when we um, decided that, you know what, let's start up a company and, you know, help educate others along the way and create a passive income and see how if they could uh, help us uh, help them to build and grow their wealth at the same time. So that was where things uh, started. And really with us, our biggest thing was our why. It was with family and time. And so we figured with what little time we had left and not wanting to work until retirement of age 65 or 67, we had to, you know, think of a way that we're, we can help us to generate income so that way we didn't have to constantly work hard in life and actually make our money work harder for us than us having to work harder for money. And so we realized again that, you know what, real estate was always there in the back of our mind. So let's go ahead and take the action and just deep dive into that and see where that would lead us to. And we realized that this was a path that would create that generational wealth that we could also pass along to our children and their children um, and generations to come. Yeah, I, I completely resonate with that. It's, uh, you know, when we're trading time for money, it always feels like we're in the cog wheel, uh, just, you know, we can never get out of this and like never ending cycle. And, you know, the same was like physicians. You know, I work in the ER and ICU, I get paid hourly and some RBUs, but uh, if I don't work, I don't get paid. I don't get passive income. So, you know, with having my son, having a family, it's all about, you know, you want to spend the time with the people you love and be able to spend it whenever you want, however you want with the financial means to, you know, do those things with them. So uh, I think a lot of, and that's the reason why I want to talk to you guys, because you go, a lot of people are very busy professionals working full time and often they don't have time or they don't even know how to get started. And don't even know how to learn, like what to learn. And they have family as well with kids. So they're not really sure like how to even balance. So I think you guys are a perfect example of teamwork for, you know, that kid create a real estate company and also take down like apartment units and balance family at the same time. So that's why I wanted to dive deep today. And for the audience, um, we always start with our why, which is, you know, the, the main purpose. If you don't have a strong enough why that you're not as likely to be motivated to go through with what you have to go through because it's not easy. There are always going to be challenges, but there are always lessons along the way. So I guess my question to you guys is, so, you know, you guys have your why for financial freedom and uh, time freedom for your family. And so, you know, do you have like a tipping point or moment where you're like, okay, we're going to dive into real estate and what, do you did you ever set like any concrete goals at that time, like an end vision or maybe end vision right now? What is your end vision of where you guys want to go? Well, I think I'll, I'll, I'll start by talking a little bit about how I got into where we're at right now. And, um, you know, I think, you know, I'm talking to a physician. We're talking to probably an audience of a lot of physicians. And uh, since I was a child, that was my dream was to be a physician. Uh, and for you know one reason or another, I didn't get into dental uh, into medical school, but I did get into dental school. Um, and when I got into dental school, um, you know, when I, I I didn't I got into it without even knowing what it was all about. Um, I thought, oh, you know, you're called a doctor, and you know, you can earn good money doing it, and you're helping, you're treating patients, and all that. And you know, as soon as even in my first year of dental school, I realized it wasn't for me. Um, but fortunately, you know, I got into a specialty that was the best blend of medicine and dentistry, um, which was oral medicine. Um, and, you know, from doing that, I, I kind of stumbled upon that almost, you know, um, accidentally. Uh, and from that, it's kind of pivoted into a very successful, you know, academic career and doing things that, um, you know, I wouldn't have imagined that I would have achieved, you know, uh, you know, being a residency program director and training and mentoring residents and working in a hospital and, um, you know, helping patients with chronic conditions. Um, and so, um, and doing research um, and, you know, just achieving all of these career goals. And as I, as I achieved all of those and I had great mentors, I still have great mentors along the way in doing all of these things. And I'm mentoring, you know, residents and they kind of keep me on my toes uh, and keep me young and fresh. Um, you know, I still felt like it just wasn't enough. 
Um, and and it's it's because we achieved this all at a at a huge price. Um, you know, in my specialty, number one, it's not very it's not very lucrative. Usually, it kind of gears you towards an academic career, and there's not very many academic jobs. So, you know, I had to you know we had to uproot our family. Um, you know, to a number of different places. You know, first we lived in lived in your hometown in Houston for a couple of years. That was my first attending job, and then uh, you know, back to Charlotte here, where um, we you know we built my career. And um, you know, even though I love what I'm doing, I still love what I'm doing. Um, you know, it's a W two job. You only have limited time. We're twelve hour drive away from all of our family in Canada. Um, and every day I just, you know, we miss them dearly and our parents are just not getting any, any younger. Um, and, you know, and so yeah, that's, that was the tipping point, you know, that, you know, just being able to, you know, you have to work, you only have limited days off. Um, yes, I get to do all of these cool things, but, you know, it's not on my own terms. Um, you know, I'm making a good salary and everything like that, but um, it, it just, you know, it just wasn't enough. You know, we had to do something. And so when you ask what it was the tipping point, uh, that was the tipping point. You know, every every single day, you know, I get homesick. I miss my family. I wish I could spend more time with them, other than the two or three times a year that we get to see them. Um, so, and then the other the other thing was just about, you know, we just can't s- stay on the path of going to work and doing this only, you know, for the next twenty to twenty five years. Uh, and I see my colleagues that are in practice. You know, I'm, I'm about roughly twenty years out. And, you know, they're just, um, they're just burnt out. And yet, you know, they've got a lot of obligations that kind of keep them, you know, stuck where they're doing because, you know, they got to put their kid through private school and they got to pay for their lifestyle and all of those things. And um, so, you know, I, I don't just see it in myself, but I see it in my colleagues. And so that, that, you know, that was the tipping point that we just had to do something other than just kind of clock in and, and, and do everything for the next 20 to 25 years solely and just rely on that as our sole source of income. Yeah, it's the lack of freedom, lack of choices. Uh, well, in a way, you're choosing a different path. But you know, if you're just in that job, there's a little bit of limitation in the choices that you have. Lack of time freedom, and really, you you know, we've heard that a lot of people on their deathbeds always wish they spent more time with family and friends and not working more, right? So, and I also saw the same thing with my pro- uh, attendings when I was in residency. Uh, one of them actually gave me. Uh, Dave Ramsey's uh, CD, which turned me around and started me on this pathway. And I think he gave it to us because he didn't want us to end up like him since he was trading time for money. Um, so I, I completely understand uh, your viewpoint. And uh, what about you, Winnie? Did you have a tipping point or anything like that? Uh, yeah, I, I realized that, um, you know, our dreams in life may not necessarily be your destiny. And hence the name of our, our business, we came up five destiny holdings because, uh, you know, I'm a mother of three young children and, you know, we just found that, uh, you know, we work so hard and we think we know what we want in life only to find when we achieve our goals, achieve our careers, it may not necessarily be fulfilling enough. And we figured that, well, if there is a way for us to achieve our freedom of time, um, you know, geographic freedom, health freedom, you know, whatever it may be, that's fulfilling, rewarding for us. So instead of having to work so hard for that, why not find a way where we can achieve it faster, but have meaning fulfillment in our life? And so our biggest thing was family. Um, and with that being said, uh, the, you know, the last couple of years have been very difficult, especially with COVID and all, uh, you know, we, it was a hard time for everyone. And so with our family being Canada, I found that there was, it was difficult because with restrictions, um, lockdowns, and when your parents go through the uncertainty of changes in their health, and it's a scary moment, and you don't know which direction they may be you know, going, you're headed towards um, and the possible outcomes and you're not able to see your loved ones. It's it's very difficult. And so we realized at that point in time that we cannot just rely on one source of income and feel, you know, confined to that. We need to find other ways to generate income where we could create that freedom, that flexibility, the time to travel, to be with family. And so 
that really was our um, turning point for us was family um, and to be able to be with them. And again, like Joel mentioned, it was the fact that our parents aren't getting younger and, you know, their time is so precious and we only have so much time ourselves, um, you know, on this planet, essentially. And that the kids grow up so quickly oh, yes. before your eyes. Definitely. <laughs> yeah. And Joel, you were going to say something? No, I think it's just the you know, the three years, um, you know, we try to go back to Canada like two or three times a year. And, you know, when we moved back to Charlotte, you know, with the kids, you know, we, we, uh, we felt it was so important that the kids spend time with their cousins and their grandparents. And we just had, you know, two and a half years where we couldn't do that. Um, and so, you know, I think that just illustrated the point that, you know, we really had to find a way that we can free up more time and have more resources so that, um, you know, they can create those memories and have those, you know, I grew up with my family all around, um, you know, my cousins and my uncles and aunts and, um, you know, and they're not getting those same experiences uh, that I had growing up, that Winnie and I had growing up. And we want to try to give them that at least in the summers, you know, when we go up there. Um, but, you know, when you're, when we're living geographically somewhere else and you're, you know, you only have limited time off, uh, you know, you can, you can only do that so much. So that's the reason, you know, that really is at our core, our big why as to why we're doing other things, doing these yeah. other things. And uh, I can identify with that because I, when I grew up in Taiwan, I was running around with my three cousins, uh, my uncle and my aunts practically raised me. Um, I had like six uncles, two, uh, two aunts. So it was like a really fantastic time. Like, you know, it's always about family getting together all the time. Um, and Winnie, to your point about, you know, during COVID times, a lot of my colleagues I've heard, you know, have their hours cut in the ER and you have no choice. You're at the whim of a corporation uh, who is looking at, you know, income and expenses and have to allocate their resources. So having another form of passive income that is appreciating is so key. Uh, and I think a lot of people have started thinking about pivoting or have already pivoted uh, because of the COVID times. And so I wanted to talk to you guys about um, like, so you made the decision, you've got your strong why, you want to dive into real estate. Well, I guess, number one, what made you pick real estate? And number two, what was the first step you took in order to get to where you are? So, um, and I like you guys to kind of talk about, you know, kind of your journey, how long it's taken you and what you guys have achieved so far. So I'll take this. It's almost like three years ago where um, I think, you know, Winnie has family members back in Canada, you know, cousins and spouses of cousins that have been very successful in real estate. And at the same time, they've had day jobs, you know, so, you know, one Winnie has a cousin that, uh, you know, they've had uh, Winnie has a cousin that's an electrician that as a day job, and one that was a fire, you know, firefighter as a day job, and they were very successful in real estate while still maintaining their day jobs. I mean, you know, acquiring, you know, multi million dollar uh, portfolios in real estate, but still keeping their day jobs. And, um, you know, it, we thought that, you know, this is kind of the path that we wanted to follow. You know, we, we're not necessarily going to give up our day job, you know, I'm not going to stop, you know, being, being a dentist. Um, and so, you know, it, you know, it kind of got connected with, um, you know, a real estate conference, probably that you're all very familiar with the physician real estate conference and uh, knew nothing about it. Um, went there, uh, kind of spoke to people that were at the conference and saw what results they were getting um, by getting mentorship. And then, you know, one thing led to another, you talk to one person that's doing it, that took, that took a mentor. And then we got mentorship um, in one aspect of real estate, and that's what got us started. That's what built us the confidence. Uh, it got us into a community of other people that were doing it. Um, probably if we weren't in that community, if we didn't have that mentorship, then uh, we wouldn't have uh, pulled the trigger and made the big move in terms of buying our first properties. And uh, you know, after after doing that, you know, we brought, bought our first few properties in Florida all through the pandemic. So. Uh, after a year of doing that, you know, we wanted to scale and go into apartment syndication. So then we kind of spoke to our mentors who, uh, who they would recommend to get mentored in that. And so then we ended up uh, getting connected in, in another mentorship group and another uh, community where other people were doing it. And, you know, you build relationships, you see other folks that are doing it, you learn from them, you form partnerships. And, uh, 
and it just kind of snowballs from there. You know, you just got to, you know, proximity is power, you know, be with others that are doing it, you know, see what, see what, you know, don't reinvent the wheel, see the people that have achieved success and kind of follow what they're doing. And, uh, you know, just kind of, um, you know, be with those folks and uh, kind of ride on their coattails and, and, uh, you know, and, and support them and partner up with them. Yeah. Yeah. There's no need to waste your time. All you have to do is find a mentor and uh, follow, copy them, copy what they're doing, essentially, right? Somebody who's already succeeded. And the in, uh, conferences you're talking about, uh, which conference is that? Is it the Passive Income? Yeah, this was the, this was the Passive Income MD conference in 2019. And, you know, I think just going, you know, I think at that point, I was just kind of fed up with just, you know, fed up with just the daily grind and knowing that this is all I had to look forward to for the next 25 years of my life. Um, because, you know, I, I, you know, I could see myself doing what I'm doing. I love what I'm doing. I wouldn't see myself doing it anywhere else except for where I'm at. But then, but then, so at one point I was kind of happy with that, but then the other side of it was like, okay, this is all I have to look forward to for the next 25 years. So, so I literally just, you know, I said, I told Winnie, I said, I'm going to go to this conference. I didn't know anybody there. I knew nothing about real estate. Um, we just have to make a change. And all it was, you know, just hopped on the plane, went to LA and we were at the conference and spoke to some folks and, you know, got some mentors from that. And uh, that's what got us started in our journey. Awesome. Yeah. For those who are listening, if you are not aware, uh, Dr. Peter Kim, he has created passive income uh, conferences and also the website. If you Google him, there's a whole website that lists all the resources that where you could pivot to to achieve passive income. And that's very similar to how I started down real estate. It was called simultaneous in a way where he hosts like a free online uh, conference. Uh, I think it was during the year of COVID, March 2020, I believe. Um, so he, I got connected. I learned about you know real estate, but also other ways of pivoting. Like if some people started a ketamine clinic, some people are doing short term rentals, etc. Mm -hmm. And then I was connected to you know our our coach, Vikram, Dr. Vikram Raya, which is our common coach, and this is how we uh, met each other. And so he's a functional cardiologist, also does real estate syndications. Um, so he's um, like somebody. I employed him as a coach, as a mentor, because that's who I want to be in five to 10 years. And he's already achieved that. So I can really resonate with what you're saying. And um, I learned my real estate through semi-retired MD group. They had the classes through uh, Luddy and Kenji. And that's how I kind of, I got started as well. Um, you, it, you just have to get yourself educated as what it sounds like, right? So what would you say is number one step for people who are in residency or people in their professional lives are there different steps for different stages? I think, um, you know, you mentioned how, you know, one of your attendings uh, gave you a book, you know, a Dave Ramsey book. And, uh, you know, ever since I kind of got connected with the whole physician uh, community, uh, you know, I started doing that with my residents. You know, I actually started, you know, a, a educational uh, series on financial literacy and, you um, uh, building wealth and also trying to design and choose a career that's meaningful for you. Uh, but the reason why I bring that up is, you know, uh, I want to give my residents the education that I didn't get uh, as a resident. Um, and so education obviously is the first step. Uh, and also I want to be that mentor, uh, you know, and or get mentors. Uh, so, you know, and you don't necessarily you know, have to pay for a, you know, I know we're at a stage where we can get a coach and, you know, I think there's a cost involved with it, but, you know, you can read books or get mentors, you know, virtually by, um, you know, going on YouTube and listening to podcasts. Um, but that's the number one step is get educated and, and get, you know, get mentors. And the number two is, is actually taking action because, you know, uh, education is one thing, but, you know, taking action and execution is the other thing in terms of being able to, you know, move from point A to point B. Um, and so I think that's where actually having a live mentor that holds you accountable or a community of people that are doing it, that, uh, that you know, you see what they're doing and the actions that they're taking. And almost there's kind of that, you know, you, you want to be the person that's, you know, you want to be the the dumbest person in the room. You know, you want to be the person that's the uh, least uh, accomplished in the room. And so that it kind of get, ignites that fire for you to kind of uh, you know, to, 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 sometimes it's intimidating, but 
you know, it, it also kind of, you know, ignites that fire for you to take action because um, so it's really education and then being around people that can hold you accountable and, and to start taking action. And then also having people that are supportive along the way. I know uh, Winnie can speak to this, you know, I think if we didn't have all of that, if we didn't have the mentorship, you know, in that case, just like with you, it was Lenti and Kenji that, um, you know, that we started with, you know, she didn't, she didn't have that confidence to jump in and take action unless we were in that community and had that mentorship, you know, for that very first time. Yeah, I think that's a good segue, Winnie. Do you have anything to add to, you know, some of the steps that you thought would be important for people to take? Uh, what has really mattered to you for you to like dive right in to become a real estate professional? And we can kind of talk if you could explain also to the audience what that's all about as well. Yes, uh, definitely. So the key thing was, uh, first of all, is to get educated. And that gave me the steps and the knowledge in order to be able to know what I was looking for to be able to find a property that would cash flow. Um, but at the same time, yes, to be um, educated with the right mentors and be surrounded by a like-minded community. So that way we could support each other, hold each other accountable. And, uh, you know, and the key thing is to take action. You could learn as much as you can um, learn, you know, whether through education, seminars, podcasts, whatever it may be. But if you don't take the action, then it's not going to result in anything. So, you know, you could say that a year from now, if you did all this education, all this research, but you didn't take any action, you would have wished you had otherwise. And so that's the one thing that we learned, you know, one that's really important to us is that if you truly put, you know, put your goals down, write down your goals, make sure it's measurable, have a time frame, and you know, tell your friends, your family, and have them hold you accountable to stick into it so that you can actually take the steps you need to achieve to your goals. And if you do that, you'll be surprised when you look back a year from now, how much you would have achieved versus if you didn't do that, and you, you know, you would have not achieved nothing. So I think that's really important. And, um, you know, take that and have your support system and just share it with others. And you will, you'll be amazed how far you'll come along. Would you be able to share with us specific actions that you guys took as an example? I think it'll be really good, you know, uh, definitely get educated. And when we say educated, it's okay, learning cash on cash. How do you pick a market? What city? You know, how do you know? How do you even do the cash on cash calculator to so you know what's the percentage that you should be cash flowing, et cetera? How property management works, their fees, insurance, taxes, et cetera. How do you sell a property, like exit, um, or you don't sell, et cetera? Right. So those are all the education piece. And there's way more than that, of course, taxes, et cetera. Uh, then what would be the next action? Like, can you run through kind of your timeline, some of the actions, concrete actions you guys have taken? So maybe perhaps we can use the example of, um, so 2019 around this time, you know, went to the conference, then enrolled in in the course. Um, And then, you know, this was like January of 2020. And the next, you know, we we started, uh, as we were learning it, we were already... The other piece of it, you know, other, other than the things that you talked about, you know, being able to identify a market, um, identify a neighborhood, you know, uh, choose a, uh, you know, be able to look at a property and be able to plug it in and determine whether it's going to cash flow and whether it's worth pursuing. Uh, the other piece of it is just assembling a team. Now we, um, you know, we chose a market that was actually remote from where we're at, uh, Tampa, Florida. And the reason why was just because, you know, even though Charlotte, North Carolina, where we live, is a great market, um, it just didn't have. Uh, what we were looking for, the, the, nothing that fit our criteria at the time. Uh, and so, you know, we decided to go look at another market. Um, and how do you do that? How can you, how can you invest remotely? Well, it's, it's assembling a team. And so, you know, having that property manager, you know, in, in vetting them, uh, having a, an investor agent, you know, work with you, um, having a lender, you know, uh, that you can, that you can work with. So, um, you know, we assembled that team and then, you know, Winnie can kind of tell the story about, you know, what we did in terms of buying our, buying our first properties and putting in our first offers. And I, and I know Winnie was the one that was kind of aggressive in, 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 uh, you know, talking to the agents and in, in putting the, putting the offer on our first property sight unseen, um, you know, four States away. Yeah, let's hear it. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So I would say, uh, you know, Redfin was our best friend then we were on Redfin constantly. So, uh, any new, uh, 
any new listings that came up, I was there every night, every first thing in the morning, I would look up new listings. And it'd be surprising how you find out that, uh, you know, realtors can actually miss, uh, could actually list something inappropriate. So instead of like a multifamily home, it could be listed as a single family home by mistake. And, uh, you know, therefore you won't have as many offers, you know, if someone was looking for a multifamily home. So that was quite interesting to find. And so when we came across one, um, it was, it, I just jumped right on it and called the broker up. And, you know, I realized that this was something that we had to act on quick. And it was great that we actually had a lender on our team already that was um, pretty much 24 hours accessible, I would say. And so if we ever, when we needed that, you know, that um, letter, of, you know, to submit to our agent um, at that time, they had it for us in like a few hours I would say at most two hours. And so we were able to put in our offer right away. So it was a situation where we were very prepared, um, you know, just ready to act quick, do whatever it took to to achieve our first step and get our first, uh, you know, rent, uh, rental income property there. And then we did the same thing. It was just people we connected with, forming our team, just sharing with everybody what we were looking for, our criterias. Um, and the next thing you knew, within a month, uh, shortly after our first closing, we got another property. And this one was unique in that it, uh, you know, it was a single family home with a, a second building behind it, which was actually a triplex unit with a vacant lot. And it was an off market property. So again, we wouldn't have come across that if we didn't build the relationships through the teams that we formed and just sharing uh, with everyone what we we're looking for. And so that came, um, you know, that that came pleasantly, surprisingly to us. So within about, I would say a month apart, we got two properties, uh, sight and see, and all of a sudden we just got six units right off the bat. And so that laid the foundation in the beginning of our real estate journey, which was, um, you know, very exciting at that time for us. And we also and learned a lot of valuable lessons along the way. <laughs> always, always. And I want to know, like, maybe part of it could be, how did you vet your team? You know, what lessons did you learn? Because we can say, okay, assemble your team, but what exactly do you have to do to find the right investor agent, to find the right lenders, um, property managers? Like, are you just Googling people, Yelping people? What are you doing? Yeah, well, great question. I interviewed each and every person I spoke to on the phone. Um, I looked them up on Google. I looked them up on the reviews. Anybody that uh, I knew who was also invested in the same market referrals as well, because, um, you know, based on their experience, what uh, they had to say, they, um, you know, had certain interactions with them. How did they handle such uh, interactions with tenants or circumstances? So I think it's very important to vet them. Um and then not just take on one property management company, but have a second backup as well, because you just never know if, you know, that management company that you find may not cover the area of the property that you end up acquiring. So it's always good to have uh, backups as well. And um, so it's it's really about just getting involved in the community and um, sharing again what you're looking for. And it's it's amazing because if you speak to a lender, you could ask them, oh, what insurance company do you recommend? You know, and or, you know, a contractor, what, um, you know, what property management companies have you heard of or know of in the area? I mean, they're the ones that are really hands on um, in the community who are boots on the ground as well. And they know people. So it's always good just to constantly ask um, and never be afraid and just reach out to them and interview them. And I think it's like a combination of being within a, uh, a group again, a pure group of uh, people that are doing what you're doing in the, in the market that you're doing it and, um, you know, getting referrals from them. And also, you know, you want to do it from a standpoint of, um, of abundance. You know, you, want, you also want to help others and because, you know, if you help others and give recommendations that they're also going to somehow it's going to come back to you. So that's how we were able to find a lot of our, our individuals. And then I think Winnie was really good in forming relationships with some of the people that we worked with. Um, I know she formed a really close relationship with our lender. Um, you know, they got to know each other personally. And, um, you know, that lender has made 
you know, that made some introductions to, I think, property managers and contractors and real estate brokers. And, you know, she's kind of got an ear to the ground as to what's going on in the community um, in terms of what properties are coming on market. So, um, you know, I think in the end, it's just really being in a community of fellow investors. And in this case, it was physician investors that were, uh, you know, investing in the same market and then just building relationships with all of the individuals that you're working with. And somehow it just kind of snowballs from there. Yeah, it sounds like step one is get you educated. You can, you know, we'll share Joel's educational resources. And also you can go to semi-retired MD. You can go to passive income to just get educated or any blog, really, real estate CPA, any sort of blog or podcast that talks about real estate investing. Though, really, you have to take action. And that's Googling, Yelping, asking your friends who that you know or acquaintances that you know do real estate and ask them for referrals on investor agents or property managers. Send that text. Shoot that email. You know, it's just one text, one email, and it will snowball into conversations after conversations. And then a few years later, you're like, so tell me about the new property you guys are have acquired. <laughs> exactly. Um, well, I think after about a year of, um, I, I know there's a bunch of different steps to get there, but you know, after a year, I think of doing our, our individual properties, I know Winnie really was pushing for, you know, I think we should look into apartment syndications. Um, and so it, it kind of, you know, and I think it just all started with us getting more educated, you know, once again, to real estate, you want to learn more about real estate. And so we, you know, we were, you know, uh, you know attending virtual meetings, it was still 20, 2020, you know, uh, in the pandemic and about apartments and larger properties, um, you know, commercial grade properties. And, uh, uh, and, and then, you know, I think when he was saying, you know, I think if I'm going to do real estate professional status in, in our small properties, um, let's scale. And so, you know, we actually spoke to Kenji and Leite and said, you know, well, who would you want to learn from in order to, uh, you know, in, to, in order to scale and go into apartment syndications. And so we then ended up going with their recommendation and then um, getting connected with that group. And, you know, they have, um, you know, an educational platform meetings and a mastermind group that we were all connected with and kind of learned how to underwrite larger properties, um, you know, learned about how to, you uh, uh, you know, the team that you need to form and the relationships that you need to build. Um, and, you know, I think when we're taking down these larger properties, you, you have to uh, have, uh, you know, build relationships with partners and with general partners uh, that would, you know, sponsor and syndicate and, and operate operate the deal. And, uh, and so it's, it's, a, it's a whole new skill set. It's a whole new education. It uses the same uh, fundamental uh, you know, the fundamentals that we learned in, in semi-retired MD uh, in order to uh, evaluate a property. But just uh, instead of, you know, looking at four units, you're looking at uh, 100 units or 200 units. Um, but it's, it, and uh, it's also um, how to navigate those relationships, you know, relationships with brokers, relationships with property management companies uh, in order, how do you um, you know, how do you underwrite, how do you put in an offer an LOI in order to, um, you know, to, to, to buy one of these larger properties? Um, how do you, uh, a, a letter of intent, you know, yes. as, as an LOI, um, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, it's a little bit of a different than, uh, you know, the smaller properties. Um, so, uh, you know, again, we, we got further education, we got kind of more, um, you know, got into a mastermind groups and we formed partnerships and, um, from there, you know, we've, uh, um, you know, general, general partnered and co-sponsored our, our first couple of deals this year, um, on the encouragement and the nudging of our mutual coach, uh, you know, Dr. Raya Vikram, uh, you know, just to, I, I think after a year of just analyzing and underwriting and trying to take down our, you know, our own deals, uh, you know, uh, our, our coach kind of nudged us, you know, who's obviously successful in doing this uh, into, you know, you need to take action and partner with somebody else in, in their deals. So, so the latest one that, you know, that we closed on was a, um, you know, again, it's kind of partnered with, you know, partnered with, uh, with our coach, uh, uh, a property in Atlanta, um, you know, a, a hundred and, um, 103 unit property in the, in the outskirts of Atlanta, which is part of a portfolio of three properties, one in, uh, San Antonio and one in Houston. And so, um, again, you know, it's a, it's a team sport. Uh, we were given the opportunity to partner, uh, in on this deal and, uh, you know, we're just very blessed. And, uh, you know, at the same time, we're also able to, uh, help colleagues along the way who are investing and partnering alongside with us to get, uh, amazing returns that they can't get in the uh, in the stock market. And uh, with that achievement, I want to ask 
what has that given you or what will it give you? You know, it's something tangible, if that makes sense. You know, you, you keep going through the real estate. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about real estate professional status and, you know, I, I want people to understand, okay, so we get the multiple properties syndication. So what does that mean for me, you know, in terms of time and financial freedom? Uh, anything tangible you can share? So let's talk about the real estate professional status when we had our first property. So, um, you know, we were able to, you know, you have an engineer come and look at your properties and they do what they call a cost segregation analysis. And then anything that's below, um, you know, a certain depreciation schedule, you can, um, you know, he evaluate, they evaluate all of the, all of the items that are uh, perishable in a property uh, that need to be replaced eventually. Um, so then anything that's, um, perishable, you know, anything that can be depreciated uh, below a certain timeline, you can actually take it all in, in the first year. And now this is the last year, 2022 is the last year that you can take 100% of uh, depreciation all in the first year. And so what does that mean? Well, you have this paper loss, you know, this, uh, you know, this negative number that actually is not really negative in reality, uh, but you can actually offset it against your active income. If um, you know, uh, if if the spouse Winnie in this case, um, you know, fulfills requirements being a real estate professional, um, and they were we were able to offset that against my active income, uh, you know, working, uh, you know, as an attending at uh, at the academic medical center, and that really resulted in you know perhaps the largest uh, tax uh, tax refund that you know that we ever that we ever got uh, that was way more than anything that Winnie would have earned uh, in her previous career. Uh, so when you talk about what the tangible um, benefits of, of being a real estate professional, uh, that's what it is when you're a direct owner. Now, if we're a uh, on the syndication side, you know, certainly you can meet your uh, real estate professional status if you are a, a general partner. The general partners are the one that are acquiring and, and operating uh, you know, the, uh, the assets, the apartments. Um, and so if you fulfill the hourly requirement to meet real estate professional status, well, we talked about how you can do a cost segregation on a small property that you own solely. Well, the same thing can be done for a, a commercial grade, you know, 100 unit, 200 unit property. And, um, you know, so for instance, you know, the last property that, uh, that we closed on, uh, the one earlier this year in Houston, um, you know, we were able to, originally it was kind of written such that for every, dollar that uh, the limited partner and the general partner team invested in, you can actually get a dollar in, in, in tax break. Now, um, if you're on the active side, you know, that was that you can use that against active income. If you're a passive investor, you can use that against passive income. Um, so, you know, um, it, now the beauty of that was we were able to get a uh, private equity partner in that deal. And because they didn't take their, sh you know, all of the bonus depreciation uh, for that, all of the rest went to the general partners and the remaining limited partners, all of the passive investors. So in the end, what happened was that for every dollar that you put in as an investor, you actually get $2 of, bon of uh, bonus depreciation against that. So um, so it's just the way that it's structured. Um, this was a way that we can do it in a syndication deal. So now us being on the general partner side, you know, if you're able to put 100000 if you were to invest $100,000, you'll actually get 200000 in uh you know, in bonus depreciation that you can offset against your active income. So that's a two hundred thousand um, dollar, for example, uh, tax credit or tax oh, write off nice. against active income. Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, yeah, for those who are not aware of real estate professional status, essentially, uh, it's a very very rough summary. But you have to do seven hundred fifty hours, more than fifty percent of your other job. So if you're working clinically for twenty hours a week, then you have to do twenty one hours a week as a real estate professional. And they have to be material participation. What that means is property managing management type operations, not investor hours. So uh, actually conducting, you know, maintenance or fixed, you know, plumbing or coordinating like uh, rent, collecting rents, et cetera. And um, it is, you know, a lot of hours. It does get audited quite a bit, though. You know, as a concrete example, say, you know, Joel, what you're talking about is if since Wendy is a real estate professional. And we do this cost segregation study on one property that you buy in the year. And so usually cost segregation can give you deductions of about 25% of your purchase price from what I understand. So let's say it's a 400,000 property 
you do the cost segregation study uh, when you purchase it, you can kind of expect to get a hundred thousand worth of depreciation or deduction year one this year. So because this year is the last year, you can get one hundred percent. Next year is eighty percent. So what you're saying is that because you're a real estate professional, that hundred thousand uh, deduction can be applied to your academic income. So what that means is. Depending on what tax bracket you're in, you say you're in the uh, 28% tax bracket, you will get $28,000 back in your tax return. Is that correct? That, that's correct. Yeah. If it's 100000 Yeah. Yeah. And imagine if, you know, I want to give you guys an example. Um, I had the fourplex in uh, uh, Vegas. So I did the cost segregation study on that. It's 150000 deduction. I have not taken it yet. Uh, though, you know, if one year I do decide to go for a real estate professional status, then that deduction can be taken. Or uh, also another way to do it. I know a lot of people are busy full time professionals. There's another way to do it through short term rental, but that's for mm -hmm. another episode. Mm -hmm. uh, you can shelter just the same way doing short term rentals and participate in 100 hours. So, uh, so yeah, I think this is huge. And this is why real estate is so amazing for wealth building, because you get number one, the appreciation and equity of the property. Number two, it is less um, subjected to like ups and downs of stocks and crypto. It's a little harder to sell your house or buy a house you know, right away. So I think the ups and downs are a little bit uh, less extreme and drastic. And number three, you, it usually always appreciates every year. Number four, you have these... Uh, um, I guess, paper losses that you can create to generate even more wealth on your tax return. Is that correct? That's correct. They're not real losses. You know, it's, it's just you get, you know, what you call a K-1 if you're a, a passive investor um, or, you know, you just, uh, you know, your cost segregation study will, will kind of uh, quantify that to, get, and, to generate those paper losses. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And I want to touch on, you know, since when you're a real estate professional right now, and I know you have you guys have three kids, like how do you actually balance family life with, and, you know, tell me about kind of your day to day uh, as a, uh, actually before that, just so everybody knows, only one person in the marriage has to qualify for real estate professional status and the deductions that you uh, take can apply to both, uh, you know, both people's income. So this is why when can be a real estate professional set, um, a real estate professional and all the deduction can apply to Joel's. So uh, anyway, so would you tell us exactly how you are able to balance family life with some of your day-to-day -day tasks? Yeah, great question, Anne. It's uh, it's challenging, no doubt, with three young kids, um, especially during the time when we had COVID and uh, my two oldest was here at home with me virtually and trying to manage doing the real estate, uh, starting up our business. Um, it, you know, there is no easy answer to this and you only learn through trial and error. But what I found was that the more hours you put in doesn't necessarily and doesn't actually equate to more productive quality of results. You, I found that what um, would work best is to really provide, like organize your schedule. You really need to organize your schedule on an hourly basis and be consistent and stick to it. You do need to make time for yourself because if you don't, everything else around you will just, it, it's going to be affected. So I found that the best way to do it is just to wake up first thing in the morning, do your self-care, take care of yourself first. And that means, first of all, hydrating yourself with water, exercise. And, and it doesn't mean that you have to go to the gym. You could easily just go on YouTube and pull up exercise videos and just do a quick like 10, 15 minute exercise at home is all it takes. Um, do some meditation, um, write down some positive notes or, you know, things that you would like to, uh, you know, tackle on your list first that you've come up with the night before and, you know, have that set time to do it. So you work on the most important but non-urgent things first thing in the morning. 
So tackle that out of the way. And then by that time, hopefully then your kids would have woken up. You spend some quality time with them and then get back to work and set a specific time just to check your emails, your text messages. Don't get distracted by that because all these little things take time away from what is essential for you to take the steps necessary to reach your goals in life. So I found that by doing that, you're actually by the morning, by time morning is over, you've tackled quite a bit of your your to-do list and you feel good about it versus waking up later in the day, which I used to, um, you know, because that's just how, you know, my body functioned before was that I always felt like I was having to catch up throughout the rest of the day. There was never enough time. But what I've learned through, through all this now is that now I have more time with family. So I'm able to still work on the business side of things, be productive, but at the same time, by say three o'clock in the afternoon, you know, it's time for family, spending time with the kids, that quality time that you need with them. And so finding that along the way, it was a huge turnaround for me in terms of being able to manage, um, you know, being, you know, a mom, a wife, a, you know, um, an entrepreneurial business person. And, finding the balance that I needed and time for myself as well. So that was really important. And, you know, when all is said and done, when you look back in the year and we've accomplished what we had set our goals and objectives to, you realize that this is not as as hard as it seems and it's very doable. So if you just be consistent, be disciplined and keep on doing it and don't get sidetracked. And if you do, that's okay. But just get back on you know, the treadmill or whatever it takes just to make, you know, put yourself first. That's the most important thing I would say. And then everything else will follow. Yeah. Yeah. I, I definitely resonate with that, especially before I have my baby <laughs> and now I have a baby. It's like the three month old. I'm like, Oh my God, what? I have no more morning routines. <laughs> uh, but what Winnie is talking about, you know, for those of you who don't know, it's kind of, uh, it's the Eisenhower matrix and you want to do things that move the needle. You know, when you are doing a task first thing in the morning, is this going to move the needle towards your end goal of time freedom, financial freedom, and vitality freedom, or not? If not, then it's not so urgent or not so important, right? You want to get those things done first thing in the morning before you actually do other things, check social media, check even emails later on, um, and start being proactive instead of responsive. So uh, for those of you guys who want to learn more about productivity, Eisenhower Matrix, I did record a seven-day video masterclass that's on my website, or you can join the Facebook group that's on there as well. Uh, I talk about the Eisenhower Matrix quite a bit and morning routines, waking up, completing top three priorities by noon so that you are free. I, I It happened to me the same way. Like I felt like I had more time to spend with my husband um, and more time to spend with my friends and family now that I have a baby and... Uh, it's been a three and a half month journey to balance myself. I'm still learning how to uh, underwrite deals. Uh, take a, Really one thing that really helped was hiring my virtual assistant about a month uh, and a half ago, uh, which will be another episode. But uh, this is what I'm learning too. And today, uh, I think we, I shared with you guys before, finally, we uh, uh, went under contract. I did a 1031 exchange. Um, from my fourplex in Vegas to this current eightplex that's currently operating as an Airbnb. We're going to go under 60 days due diligence and we'll see how it goes. So uh, it's a balancing act. And like you said, don't be, don't beat yourself up if you ever get, ever get sidetracked and not meeting your goals during the day. And I think the other thing is that, and this, this happened to me fairly recently is like, you know, we're kind of pushing hard and we're doing all of these, uh, you know, non, non-urgent but important tasks and you're not necessarily going to see results right away and you know I, I think you you know even just a couple months ago I was just kind of getting impatient with that and um, you know I think we were reminded and this is why having good coaching is always helpful uh, you know be patient with your results but impatient with your action and you know just keep planting the seeds and you know just keep doing the reps and doing everything and 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 you know the results when they sprout you know uh, you know, they will, they will sprout, you know, exponentially, but there, you know, I think there's a lot of period of just doing these uh, important, but non-urgent tasks and not necessarily seeing results. And, um, uh, but, you know, you just got to have that faith and see, know, know what the end goal is. And you just uh, got to keep putting your mind to it. Yeah. And, yeah. It's about taking the micro steps. Mm-hmm. And eventually after a few years, you'll get there. 
And I want to touch a little bit on, you know, the mindset of scarcity, because, you know, when it's very, very common uh, that I've heard that, you know, I don't have enough money, I don't have enough time, I don't know where to go to start educating myself, or, you know, is having a 100 unit apartment, 200 unit apartment just seems like so out of reach for me, or I don't want to manage it, I don't want the work, I don't want to be bothered. What would you say uh, to that? in terms of that kind of mindset? Well, I think number one, I think you want to decide what what resonates with you. Because, you know, again, talking about real estate and building wealth and real estate, there's so many ways of doing it. You know, there's so many different asset classes. And, uh, you know, I know, you know, you and I and, you know, us, we're focusing on multifamily. But um, so you can, you know, you can do active, you know, investing. You can do passive investing. Um, So, you know, one way of, investing in a 200 unit apartment and getting uh, seven to 10% annual returns and doubling your money in three to five years is being a passive investor, you know? So, um, so I, you know, I think there's just, there's just so many ways that you can participate and build your wealth in real estate uh, that doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, if you, if you don't want to be the one that's uh, buying your own properties and fixing it up and, uh, you know, there's always the worry about answering two o'clock phone toilet, you know, uh, leaky toilet phone calls. Uh, there are other ways to do it. Um, so then in terms of also, you know, scarcity versus abundance and, you know, worry about how do I begin? I need, I need the money. There are ways to actually begin investing in real estate with little or little or no down, down, you know? Um, so, you know, I talked to some of my, my residents, you know, the, we have, we have the privilege of being doctors. And as a doctor, you have access to very favorable loans, like the doctor loan. Some of them are like no money down. And you, what you do is you want to get started and you can house hack. You know, you can uh, live in a home, uh, you know, buy a duplex, live in one side and rent out the other side using a residential loan that's no money down on a doctor's loan. Um, we have the privilege of, of getting that. So, um, so that, you know, that, that's one way of doing it. Um, you know, if, if you don't have the priv- privilege of getting those types of loans and you don't have the capital, then, um, you know, maybe you start as a wholesaler. Um, so I think there's just so many, you know, it's, it's, it's not about resources. It's about resourcefulness. You know, we hear, uh, you know, where, where there's a will, there's a way um, and you can find a way to get started. Uh, Winnie, you want to add anything to that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I would say, um, you know, d- reach out and get to know people in the real estate uh, space and you will learn so much and you will find people that you will connect with. And from there, you build that relationship. You might even find a mentor who will guide you. So I would say that if this is something that you truly want to do to be able to be financially free, um, for example, the house hack, have if you have a duplex, have your tenant pay for your mortgage and you live pretty much you know, mortgage free in a place that you own while uh, benefiting from the benefits of real estate and depreciation. Um, I mean, there are so many advantages in real estate for individuals as, you know, as a whole, it could be active or passive. And even if you're a passive investor, that that's great too, because you get to earn tax-free cash flow with the benefits of the uh, bonus depreciation. Uh, that was discussed earlier. So I would say go out there, um, meet people in the space, get educated, find someone that you connect with, and, um, you know, maybe even a mentor and just you know, continue to learn, explore and find what's right for you based on your, you know, your risk tolerance level, what criteria you're looking for, what market, and just, you know, start getting you know, your feet wet in the area. And, you know, next thing you know, you will soon hopefully take action to get in your first rental property or your first real estate investment. Um, it's always good to diversify your, um, you know, your, 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 you know, your portfolio. So in this case, stocks and bonds may not be the only avenue to invest in your money in, especially nowadays with inflation the way it is and how expensive things are with real estate, it's always a stable, solid asset. And with the national housing shortage, people are always looking for a place to live. And with that being said, if they're priced up by enough for their first home, they can't afford down payment, they're going to want to find a place to rent. So again, I think real estate is such a great avenue and space to get into. And so I would highly recommend going out there, attend conferences, meet people, and just uh, connect with people. And hopefully you'll find someone that you could resonate with. 
Yeah, yeah. And uh, I wanted to share with you, you know, the way I even got 50k loan from my own uh, retirement account. And so for those of you who have retirement accounts with like universities or anything, you can actually ask them to see if there is a way to purchase your first primary home and borrow 50k. Well, my max was a 50k with University of Texas. It just depends on your plan. And the interest was 4%. So I had to pay myself back 4%, which is fine. I can totally do that. I just like took a loan from my own retirement account, which is fantastic. And, you know, there are ways to get money. Uh, you could take out a loan from friends and family, perhaps, and just tell them you'll pay them back. Um, and other ways, like, you know, what you're talking about, the physician's loan. I know there are other physicians who put 0% down, live in their primary home for a year. Uh, that's what's, you know, qualified. That, that's what's required for you to qualify for that 0% down. And after the year, they do it again. Put 0% down, buy a second home, move out, and rent that one out. They can do a duplex, triplex, quadplex. There's so many ways. And if you don't want to be an active investor, Winnie, do you mind walking someone through what type of returns can they potentially get as a passive investor uh, from the syndication? Like, say they put in 100K, then what happens? Yeah, a great question again. So this is uh, really deal specific. It depends on the market, uh, the type of asset class, whether it's a, uh, and with that being said, it could be an A class, B class, or C class, C class property. It really depends on how the general partners uh, decide to do the breakdown. And usually it's, you know, 80, 20, um, we're really a deal could just offer one type of investment for limited partners uh, being a passive investor. So usually if it's 80-20, mean that 80% of the proceeds of the revenue and profits would go to the LP investors, depending upon the amount that you invest, and 20% would go to the general partners. And um, with that, also you would either, again, depend on what the general partners uh, decide upon. It could be monthly distributions, quarterly distributions, and when a property either gets refinanced, uh, you know, generally looking at three year term or upon sale at a five year term, whatever it may be, depending on market conditions, you would get, you know, the proceeds there there at that point in time, again, at based on the 80-20 split. So um, w- with that being said, it's just really dependent upon the deal itself again um, and what the general partners come up with. And you might even have options where you could have a 70-30 split um, or one that's just purely uh, cash flow where you don't take advantage of the upside, but you really are more risk averse and really want more of the cash um, flow coming in consistently. So then you would therefore be higher on the capital stack, meaning that after the lenders are paid their, you know, their mortgage and, you know, their debt first, then the the next you know, class that received the profits would be, say, those A class uh, shares. So it really is deal specific. And I would ask a lot of questions, make sure you're comfortable with the deal, make sure you fully understand it. Um, because that's the most important thing is that you need to be educated and, you know, based on your risk tolerance level, um, decide upon if this is the right type of asset or deal that you want to invest into. Yeah, yeah I, uh, go ahead. I think chiming in, you know, in terms of what are expected returns, you know, when we're trying to look at a deal, you know, we're always trying to, um, you know, we're underwriting it such that the limited partners in whatever the split that that it's in, whether it's 70, 30 or 80, 20, um, you know, would usually the target is that they would double their money uh, within within five years. It could range anywhere from three years. It could, you know, can go all the way down to, to seven years. Um, and so, uh and when we double your money, that means like a hundred percent return. And so uh, that hundred percent return is usually a combination of the cash flow that you get on an annual basis, plus the proceeds on sale of the property. Um, you know, when when we exit. Um, and so, you know, for instance, if you had a deal that was underwritten to uh, cash flow seven, you know, let's let's just say ten percent. You know, I think. Right now, it's a little bit hard to get 10% returns, but it's still doable. Uh, and then you hold it for five years, so you you earn 50% total. But then, you know, on on sale, uh, you know, you you participate in your share of the proceeds on sale. You get another 50%, which is your 100%, uh, and then plus you know the return of your principal on it. So some, you know, they have lower cash on cash, uh, and then they're banking on higher appreciation on sale. Uh, but generally, you know, I think the targeted returns are 
uh, you know, to what they give you an equity multiple, um, you know, of, uh, of anywhere from, you know, uh, 1.5 to two, meaning it's 150 to 200% total, um, you know, um, you know, based on the principle that you put in. So uh, as an example, so you could potentially be a passive investor in an apartment syndication deal, depending on how the deal structures uh, structured. Uh, if we're talking about two times equity multiple, so you're saying we can put 100K with the cash flow and the amount that we get from exit in maybe, five, let's say, five years, we can double our money from 100K to 200K. Correct. A combination yeah. of the cash flow plus the proceeds on sale. And, uh-huh. and the, we also have paper losses that could shelter some of that income. Yeah. And, uh, you know, if, if you, it basically the paper losses usually are structured. And, you know, I, I think you brought up a point a little bit earlier, you know, the, when you do a cost segregation, it's usually um, about 25% of the purchase price. Well, you know, when you purchase a property, usually you're putting down 25%. So that, so that's why it really works out almost one to one. You know, almost everything that you put in is, you know, you're pretty much going to, uh, you know, get that return. It, it just kind of works out that way. You know, it doesn't always work out that way for all deals. Um, you know, some are less. You know, um, and some are more. You know, just based on how it's structured. But, um, but yeah, these are these are uh, gains that are tax free because you have those to offset those offset those gains. And as a limited partner investor, you do nothing, right? You just um, send in your, you know, uh, you yeah, wire your funds your on money. day one, and then you just cl- watch the money come in to your, uh, to your bank account, you know, what they call mailbox money. Mm, yeah. So that's another way, like if you, you know, you educate yourself, you have to learn how to assess a deal to see if this deal is good for you. But if you want to be hands off, hey, uh, apartment syndication, being a limited partner, a passive investor is a great way to get started as well. Um, and so I want to see, you know, what are some three takeaways you would give our uh, audience? And after that, you know, if people want to learn more about you, learn about your syndication, learn, you know, try to get onto your newsletter it's because you guys give great education. Uh, how will we find you? Um, so I'll answer your first question, you know, three takeaways. Maybe I'll do I'll do a couple and then Winnie can add one or add, you know, some more of herself. Uh, You know, so, you know, number one, um, number one is get educated, you know, just start reading. Number two, get around people that are doing it. Um, And number three is just take action. And I don't know if there's anything you want to add to that, Winnie. I think those are really the top three, I would say. Um, and definitely, I would surround yourself with like-minded individuals. Have a mentor if you need uh, if you need that guidance. Um, one that has the you know experience and the knowledge more than yourself who can guide you uh, to achieve in your goals in life um, because you want to have someone to hold you accountable to make sure that you are taking the steps and the action necessary to get to your end goal in life. And then in terms of resources, you know, you can always reach us. Our website is uh, uh, the number five, D as in dog, H, uh, partners.com. Uh, we have a blog. Um, I have a free ebook that you can, um, you know, you can download on how you can. It's, it's really targeted for dentists, but it's also targeted for all other, um, all other professionals, you know, how, how you can replace your income partially by investing passively in real estate. Um, and so, you know, and, and when you do that, you can also subscribe to our newsletter. Um, I usually like to write a lot of articles about, um, you know, educate colleagues about financial freedom and, uh, you know, the value of your time and, you know, why we are uh, trading time for, you know, why we don't want to continue trading time for dollars. Um, and then you can also reach me in LinkedIn. Um, you know, it's linkedin.com forward slash IN forward slash Joel uh, hyphen J hyphen Nepenus. And uh, Winnie, do you have any contact you would like to share? Uh, yeah, I think the best way to reach me would actually be uh, at our website, um, which Joel had mentioned, or you could uh, contact me directly at my number, uh, which uh, we could uh, post the the phone we'll number at the bottom. The show notes. Yeah, sure. Mm-hmm. Sounds yeah. like a plan. All the resources that you know we're listing, we'll of course put in the show notes. Uh, you know, any social media accounts, websites, how to sign up for newsletters, and um, if you would pick one top resource for them to go, you know, of course, going on your resources. Uh, but if another one top resource for them to educate themselves on, what website would you recommend, or book, or blog, or podcast? Uh, I think I will start, and I think it's a mind to me. It was mind blowing. 
and it kind of changed the way I viewed things. And, uh, you know, on podcasts, you know, look for Naval Ravikant and he goes through this. Um, I think he converted a Twitter storm into a, uh, you know, it was like little four minute, five minute snippets, but you know, it all adds up to like, I think two hours and it's called how to be rich and how to be happy. Um, and he kind of goes over a lot of these principles on, you know, how you can build wealth and be happy doing so and, uh, um, you know, creating assets and acquiring assets um, so that you're not uh, trading time for dollars. I haven't seen that. I'm going to have to check it out. Thank you. And Winnie, do you have anything that's your top resource? Uh, yeah, I love the book, um, The Perfect Week Formula by Greg Ballantyne. I found that, uh, you know, that was very helpful for me in trying to, as a busy mom, um, trying to, you know, work on the real estate too, trying to find a good schedule that worked for me and getting me on the right uh, path to where I am today. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah, I love that book as well. There's a perfect week formula and the perfect day formula from the same author as well. Right. So we'll put that in the show notes. And I've recorded two prior episodes on real estate, go ahead and check it out. One of them uh, I was describing my journey, how I went from zero knowledge in real estate to a fourplex in Vegas remotely, because I live in Houston a year later. And the other one was my interview with the investor agent team. And we talked about how networking and team is so important. So I work with that investor agent team and uh, the CEO of that team, and I interview him on how to get started. And um, it was a whole team that had like six or seven people on the same team uh, coordinating everything with you. And as a new investor, it was so helpful. They were my mentors for my first deal. And now we're undergoing what's called 1031 exchange. So uh, essentially, it's a way to sell your property, put your proceeds in the 1031 uh, fund or exchanger so that your taxes on the proceeds or your gains can be deferred and be used for the down payment of the next property. So as I go through this process, we'll be putting out an episode on that. And you can always go to uh, it's not rocket science show.com for all the show notes, the resources we already talked about. And please go on iTunes or Spotify and give us a review or feedback, or just look me up on social media send me a message. And I want to know what you guys think about the episode, suggest some topics that you want us, you know, to record. And also you can apply for peak performance coaching with me on the website and send it to me on sungandmd at gmail.com. So I want to thank you guys so much for uh, your time, your precious time, you know, away from your kids and, you know, in order to add value to others, to educate others. So I want everybody to know that, you know, really in the end, everything that we need is already within us now. So just look inside, take micro steps, go look up one website, subscribe to one podcast, or go watch one video, or just send a text message to your friend that you know is in real estate, like, hey, can you refer me to an investor agent? And that's it. After this one, take one action after this podcast. So anyway, thank you guys so much. That's it for today's episode. Head on over to iTunes and subscribe to the show. One lucky listener every single week that posts a review in iTunes will win a chance in the grand prize drawing to win a private VIP day for a health and life makeover with Dr. Ann Sung herself. Then be sure to head on over to it's not rocket show.com and pick up your free gift from Dr. Sung. Then join us on the next episode.